Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0! We are... watching things explode on the launch pad, because I decided to get uh, crafty and put uh, igniter SRBs on the base of these uh, launch clamps that serve absolutely no purpose other than costing us more money. Anyway, this is the Jasper uh, 1 mission. This is the uh, Jupiter Atmospheric Science Probe uh, Experiment Return. Its uh, objective is to uh, test the viability of aero capture into Jupiter orbit and deploy science probes into uh, Jupiter's atmosphere and uh, transmit back as much science as they can manage before succumbing to the intense pressures and heat of the gas giant. And uh, we are at our Jupiter window, uh, a little inconveniently considering we have a live test going on with a live Kerbal who is in current SOI of the moon and probably in need of course correction. Anyway, uh, our relative inclination with the moon is at a decent level, so we're going to go ahead and get this mission underway. SAS is on, throttle is set to full, uh, ignition. Good engine light, clamps off. And uh, 1.26 off the pad for this uh, two engine or two booster engine variant of our DN5 series uh, lifter. Uh, probably a well, much more well-balanced variant of the uh, rocket you saw go up last episode, but uh, it still does the job, considering we are only trying to deliver about 25 tons to uh, Jupiter SOI. Uh, I think this thing will be a little bit more manageable to fly. We have consistent TWRs uh, pretty much across the board, although I forgot to turn the pumps on the clamps on. Please tell me. Okay, good. We didn't see a whole lot of boil off, but these numbers are definitely different. 354436 versus 4446. So, uh, a little bit of boil off there, definitely. Uh, hopefully, not enough to kill the mission. And uh, we do have a boogie noodle uh, going up today. Ah, these gimbals have already been limited by so much. 49 is what I put it at, right? Uh, this is going to be exceptionally difficult to fly while trying to dial in a gimbal. Ah, alright. And we do need to gravity turn, like, right now, and hopefully not lose control of the whole thing. I thought I solved this whole boogie noodle fiasco before. Apparently I'm wrong, so this is going to take some concentration. Uh, as per usual, uh, I guess I will pick all of you up in orbit. So we did have a uh, little bit of the uh, boogie noodle going on uh, as we did experience during testing. I think this is uh, just a uh, reality of having a lot of uh, weight at the very top of the uh, cargo itself and it just being attached to the engine node through its uh, AJ-10. Um, I did think about inverting it, but it was uh, a whole lot of trouble and not really worth the payoff for uh, what was kind of a uh, almost tolerable two and a half minutes of the uh, first stage of flight, and then it just would have been awkward the whole rest of the way. Anyway, uh, we're going to come up here on booster step in a minute or two, which is pretty much the uh, end of the boogie noodle phase. There they go, down and away. Uh, fairing step will follow shortly as soon as I finish adjusting the staging, and there they go. And to make sure we activate our comms, uh, because that definitely needs to be done, and then uh, shore up our RCS propellant make sure all that is uh, clear uh, and locked, although it's uh, hard to get to that reserve tank that's tucked in there, the heat shield, although really I guess it's a ballast tank more than a reserve tank. It's uh, really its sole purpose is to make sure that uh, we can shift our uh, center of mass uh, close enough to the heat shield where we won't go all spinning around when we go to uh, aero capture at Jupiter, which is a bold enough plan all on its own. So uh, we're going to uh, come up here on the end of the core stage. We are going to have to light that HG3 upper for uh, just a small uh, little bit to uh, finish circularizing our orbit. Uh, I blame this mostly on a very bad ascent path as this is not the uh, standard for the uh, DN5 on uh, any block really. Uh, our solar panels are out and away and I guess uh, originally in intended to uh, carry this uh, hydrolock stage with us uh, all the way to Jupiter to see if we couldn't uh, jettison it uh, at Jupiter, make sure we disposed of it properly. But, um, yeah, well, I mean, 
we'll get to that part. <laughs> So don't worry. Uh, those solar panels will be uh, largely ineffective by about the halfway mark or so. Anyway, uh, I'm going to turn you over to old me for circularization. All right, 233 by 164. That's uh, pretty much good enough for me. Let's uh, go ahead and switch our target from uh, the moon to Jupiter. Yeah, it looks like our LP test vehicle is still... Doing its testy thing, set as target. Goodbye, rendezvous planner. <clears throat> Hello, maneuver planner. There we go. Computing. There we go. Uh... OS Delta V, 6.833 kilometers per second. We'll take that. That's actually going to give us a, a little bit extra, so we can correct when I inevitably screw this up. So let's uh, focus our view here at Jupiter. Yeah, that's a, that's a collision. Not that we really want to collide with Jupiter. I guess we'll uh, fine-tune that on the way out. We've got 48 minutes to kill before we have to make this maneuver. Initial orbit must not be hyperbolic. Get over it. So we'll go ahead and time warp ahead. All right, we're about seven minutes out. Let's go ahead and get angled in. Exactly seven minutes out. Wow, look at me. Come on, old friend. Okay, good. We are already about a quarter of an orbit past our peri... Our, our, no, that's apoapsis. Time to periapsis. One hour. So we should realistically be in no danger of uh, screaming back through the atmosphere at uh, 10 kilometers per second. We do have a heat shield facing, but we would like to save that as it has a much more daunting task ahead of it. So, we'll just uh, finish getting ourselves angled in here. Uh, very unstable. Let's start to ullage this engine. Uh, six minutes of runtime on our HG3. Although I do intend to throttle it back towards the end. That is really not where we need to make the uh, adjustment. So I guess we'll just uh, time warp it a m minute or so into the future. Maybe right to the four minute mark. All right, four minutes, 10 seconds. Let's ullage. Very unstable. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Let's tell the computer to hold the node. Very risky. Risky, stable, very stable ignition. Good light on the HT3, fantastic. And wow. Boogie Noodle in full effect. Let's uh, get rid of Computer Assist because it's obviously trying to kill us. And instead, we'll just uh, resort to manual control. Okay, it looks like our two drop pods had come uh, loose. They did not. Uh, can we extend this RTG boom safely? Yes, we can. Let's go ahead and do that. Fantastic. RTGs are in deployed positions. How is our electric draw looking? We are draining. We are also uh, in the nighttime side of Earth. Once we're clear of that, I think the solar panels will actually do us some good. Maybe we'll hang on to this HG3 stage and uh, at least see if we can't jettison it into uh, Jupiter herself. Itself? Doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, at least then we can keep our solar system clean. So, uh, this burn is going to take another five and a half minutes. I guess I don't know if I have much to talk about, really. We've gone over this mission uh, a few times now in all its iterations. Uh, we should be fairly squared away, so... Oh boy, we're not going to hit the moon, are we? No, we're, we are going off-plane from the moon. And I really hope we don't end up on an encounter there. 
with proper planning that could absolutely assist us in our ejection, but we did not plan for that. Stay out of my way, Moon. So we'll uh, speed through the rest of this burn. Um, it almost went well. Couldn't really use a physics warp, as uh, you can see our lateral tanks there would uh, get all droopy which is just weird enough all on their own. We did have to reinforce them with struts. Um, for anybody who watched the uh, Twitch livestream recap or the livestream itself, there was a, a lot of uh, finagling with those tanks involved to uh, keep them on the correct side of the heat shield during uh, high-G deceleration. But um, uh, had I been paying more attention to the actual node in instead of uh, what my droopy tanks were doing, I likely would have seen that I was uh, maybe a quarter degree or so uh, off the node itself, which uh, did create this large disparity at Jupiter, uh, very, very unfortunately, and it would absolutely need to be corrected. So I'll set up a node. We still do have plenty of ignitions left on our HG3 stage. I just also then very inadvertently clicked uh, warp to here, which was real dumb. Uh, absolutely dumb. And having to double check on our uh, test mission for our uh, new crewed vehicle to make sure it wasn't about to uh, encounter some tragic fate uh, relating with its proximity to Earth. Uh, it's fine. It's still at its periapsis, or it's almost at its periapsis with the moon, so we've still got another couple of days before we have to pay attention to that uh, drastically. But it did cost us a lot of delta-v on this uh, correction to uh, not only solve our inclination with Jupiter, but to put us on a uh, proper course to uh, capture at Jupiter. Uh, we're looking at more than almost a kilometer per second, a little more than a kilometer per second or so. Yeah, just a, just a sh touch under one kilometer per second, which uh, was bad enough all on its own, seeing as how we have uh, almost 160 meters per second left in our HD3 stage, which uh, means we'll be taking 800 some odd meters per second from our uh, probe proper. There's the light on that engine. We'll pump the rest of the uh, RCS fuel forward uh, into our reserve tank and then uh, eject that core stage and light the AJ-10 uh, eventually. Uh, we did have to make sure our tanks could be uh, unlocked properly, uh, get ourselves clear and away, and then fire up the AJ-10. Um, this burn alone jeopardizes the mission a lot actually and it uh, could cause some very serious problems with our Delta V on our anticipated return uh, all because I was a half or a quarter degree off the node for ejection and then uh, hit the warp to here button uh, entirely unintentionally um, speeding through the burn it uh, doesn't take very long and sped up footage that's also being done in four times time acceleration. But we do eventually get ourselves down to uh, something that's pretty close. We're going to uh, set a node way out here and use that as an alarm clock so that we can uh, adjust our heading to uh, get ourselves into a good altitude for a hopefully an aero capture. Some expired contracts there for whatever reason that didn't count this as a uncrewed mission so we didn't get paid. Uh, we'll lock the rest of our tanks and set our alarm and let this mission get underway. In about two years, we'll check in on it again and uh, see how much we've messed this up. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode, everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it, and I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.